Ghana is among the countries in Africa to actually legalize small-scale mining. There were times when holding gold was an offense to the law. I can say that on paper, Ghana has one of the best um, setups or laws and regulations regarding small-scale mining. It's difficult for anybody in my mainstream banking to actually say, yes, I can give you $50,000, I can give you $10,000. It is very difficult. In the midst of the dangers, difficulties and complaints against artisanal and small-scale mining, the industry has continued to provide sustainable livelihoods and incomes for many rural homes, as well as contribute greatly to annual national gold production. In Ghana, I think in 2012, 2013, uh, about 34% of our gold, total amount of gold produced, came from the small-scale mining sector. We haven't taken advantage of this well enough because if we were taking 1% tax of, out of this, it would be significant. But the way things are, um, I'm, I'm not sure the state makes that much money, but at least people are employed out of that. Now, if you look at employment, the estimate has always been around 1.5 million people almost directly engaged in small-scale mining. But how serious has the country taken the formalization of artisanal small-scale mining? Small-scale mining is very important to the economy of this country. In 1989, in the wisdom of the government at that time of the state, they passed a law that allowed for Ghanaians who were interested in mining or in small-scale mining to undertake small-scale mining. Now, the challenge we have had is how the law has been implemented and how we have applied ourselves to the law. I think that um, the licensing procedure has to be re-looked at to make it simpler for small-scale miners to be able to register. Um, on paper, we say it is 90 days, but on the ground, it can take about two years. Lack of participation in policy formulation is not the only problem artisanal and small-scale miners face, but access to viable land. Most of the areas have been given to the large-scale miners, so we don't even have a space for small-scale mining. That is why the regard miners are everywhere. For ASMs to have access to viable land, the Geological Survey Department has a crucial role to play. The role of Geological Survey is to delineate areas where there's a good potential and that when the small scale miner goes there, he knows that he's not just going to waste his time, but gets uh, something out of uh, the work that he will do. So the bottom line is uh, getting the necessary resources, logistics for Geological Survey to uh, do proper investigation and give the, uh, the documents, the maps to the Minerals Commission to sort of uh, parcel out and give to the small scale miners. On the concessions of large scale mines, there are several small pockets of uh, mineable reserves that are not suitable for large scale operations. These have to be identified. We should be able to sit down and ask ourselves, what are the conditions that small scale miners have to meet? so that they will be allowed to work on small pockets of mineable reserves on the concessions of large scale mines. The artisanal miner act as per the law, or the small scale miner as per the law, should be a Ghanaian uh, not below 18 years. It would have um, land of about 25 acres. They will use simple implements and all that. Now what we see is no longer simple and artisanal. You see, the use of excavators, which is not a small scale mining equipment, I mean, uh, an artisanal mining equipment. You see trommels, you see chanfan, you see all these equipment that the law at that time did not anticipate. Besides these challenges, artisanal and small scale miners also have a difficulty with accessing financial credit. If you want to make more, you need to put in a lot more money and if you, as an indigenous um, um, small-scale miner, be, be it woman or, or male, cannot access these funds, I think it's very tempting to get a foreign financier. The Chinese came in to fill a gap. People need funds. The mainstream funding agencies or financial agencies are not able to provide the funds. 
And if as a people, we do not want the Chinese to be around, then the question is, what are we doing to fill in the gap that the Chinese has left? But what is the financial industry's own expectations of ASMs in filling the financial gap? Once you have a concession and then with a digging permit from the Minerals Commission and you are registered with the Register General's Department to do the business of mining and then we also see that you have the certificate from the Environmental Protection Agency then we will readily finance it. With the ASM sector determined to survive, how should the state handle the sector in the phase of its accompanying environmental pollution challenge? Small-scale miners that are regularized, first of all, should be able to optimize their resource in terms of the flow sheet that they are using. And two, there should be environmental stewardship. And after they have closed down, there should be um, some form of reclamation to make sure that they tidy up the mess that they have created in the course of mining. Because naturally, mining creates mess. To deepen the discussion towards realizing a more formalized ASM sector, Friends of the Nation, in partnership with the International Institute of Environment and Development, is showing the way with the National Action Dialogue on ASMs. The fora is going to take place in Takwa. It's going to take place over a four-day period, where two days of it is dedicated to field visits to understand what artisanal small-scale mining is in areas in Takwa and the Wasa West District, and two days to come and sit and discuss and respond to the needs of the sector. I am confident that that will be very beneficial to us. And, you know, the Commission got itself involved in it because of the belief that there's something beneficial for the cause of small-scale mining. In my opinion, small-scale mining has come to stay. And it will be in Ghana's interest to put more energy and more effort into the sector to let it work. I think an ideal situation would be to have a financial institution or a bank that is really um, dedicated to the mining sector, just like we have Agri Development Bank, the Energy Bank. I think that, that, that would be great. I have strong um, hopes for this dialogue that something good will come out of it. But more importantly, after the dialogue, the implementation.